Citizens of Grand Cathay, welcome back. It is I, the heir of Cathay, um, the Salt Dragon Eternal, and we're going to be continuing the campaign. We are 107 turns in. Some of you have been commenting saying that you are really enjoying the rather fast upload schedule. Well, at least for me, it's fast. It's probably not fast for someone doing YouTube full time. But I am trying to keep it daily or very near daily, and I have been successful in doing that all through the new year so far. And I wish to continue it that way. Um, so we do have the opportunity to move into enemy territory now and challenge the vampires. I could wait till I get a third army, which would certainly be the smarter and more prudent thing to do. But if I'm being honest, I think that with two full armies, we should be able to hold back pretty much anything the vampires can throw at us. These two lords are relatively low level, so there's going to be some downside there in the sense that um, their units aren't going to have as many upgrades and stuff like that. We don't have as much magic. We'd have six crane guns, though. We'd have four celestial dragon crossbows, four terracotta sentinels, four artillery pieces, three of which are fire rain rockets, so no infantry is going to be alive at the point at which it gets across the map. We have the Righteous Lances of Wei Zhen, um, which are a good single entity killer. Um, I mean, we've, we've got we've got some good units stacked up here. We've got Bannermen, we've got Dragon Guard, more Dragon Guard, Halberds aplenty. So again, we've we've got we've got a pretty stout uh, stout line, and then we're moving into enemy territory this direction as well. Um, I'd like to attack the Skaven. The trick with the Skaven, though, is they might be able to travel the underground into my territory here. Seems like a very real possibility, so I might want to start putting together some defenses there. And then same thing at Shangyang. We are at plus one Yang in harmony. So we need to put a Yin building on the docket. I don't know if it's possible. Let me see if I can find a place to throw a Yin building in. That one actually just needs defenses. All right, where is a good place to add a Yin building? We could always hire a character too, which would be one option. But I'm gonna see if I have like a an open spot to build a yen building here. Or if I have a yen building that's going that just isn't complete, which that actually may be the case out here. Nope, that one's completed. Yeah, no, we're good. Okay. So let's go back and keep searching. Gunpowder Road. There are so many buildings we need to build. Like, I mean, there are so many. Um, we almost can't have enough money. Hai Chai here would be a good place. Um, so I can build a Yin Kum building, as we have affectionately named it. And that will put us back on track on the very next turn in terms of balance. And then we need to kind of... I, I do think I'm going to go ahead and start venturing into vampire territory with these two armies. I don't, I don't want to turtle and sit around anymore. It is my calling. So we're going to challenge the vampires. We'll see whether they come and seek out the challenge. The dragon. Um, this army is retraining. We do have some of Grimgore's Ard Boys coming up on us. These armies can push forward to the Vale of Titans. It suits my and I think we should. The Iron dragon. Let's go ahead and move up here. Fate reveals a path. Ah. Ah. I'm gonna try and stay. Oh, this one's just empty. I'm gonna actually colonize it. And then I'm gonna hand it to the ogres. I guess Chaos came up here and raised these. I kind of expected to find some Skaven up here. Take a look for Skaven corruption. There is still a fair bit of Skaven Corruption, so they might be there just further north of us. Okay. Alright. Just wanted to make sure I was seeing things right, but yeah, we'll, we'll hand over that settlement to the Ogres. Do I have an agreement with the Ogres again? Yourself useful to the 
We have a defensive alliance. So, okay, good. I can probably pull the military alliance by just offering... Um, I'll hand them Veil of Titans, which is that one there. Yeah, we can pick up the military alliance. Um, we could balance the offer and get some money out of it, but I don't really want to extract money out of the ogres at the moment. Um, because I want them to actually be alive. Let's take a look at their wars, though. They are at war with the Knights of Kalidor, which I don't think it would instantly pull me into. A reliability got hit somewhere. I don't remember what it was. Where it's probably because we didn't join, um, we didn't join Kalidor in the war against the ogres, or whatever it was. Um, let's just go ahead and propose this offer. That's how you play true. Okay. All right. So we've given the ogres a piece of territory because again, we want them to be there. We want them to be a buffer state. My objective is to build up a very strong relationship with them and hold it. Uh, the ogres make a good buffer state. They have a rather large gut for buffering against attacks. Born to rule. Okay. First, we thank our This says recently colonized, okay. Lord of the Jade Swamp. Okay, um I do want these two armies to be within replenishment range of each other. And since this is now friendly territory, we'll replenish even if we're not in the encamp stance, so, like I said, I want those two close to each other. I don't want to leave the door open for any more disasters like we have managed to do fairly recently. Of dragons. Never fly, just go ahead and march never back this up. way. So we just finished taking out an enemy army there. It looks like we've got a skill point to handle here as well. Uh, we've gotten most of the good stuff there. Lightning Strike would be good. I mean, it'd also be good to have some magical killing capability in this army. I think which one we want to go with first. Let's go ahead and unlock this and head through some I magic stuff. Because um, sometimes blob busting becomes a very Shogun important Gun skill to retain. This lord leveled Celestial up. Ancestors. Let's do route marcher. Okay. We can build another army with that one as soon as we feel comfortable doing so, but I'm not feeling the need to do it at just this moment. There's going to be buildings available. I'm going to I'm going to keep my cash high at the moment. We're not dispatching the caravan because it's just going to be killed. But um, if we can kind of get the caravan of Blue Roses beat down a little, I should be able to start dispatching caravans to the Empire. Um, we could build an outpost with the Ogres. I'll probably do that soon as well. Because, again, outposts can be a handy way to fill an army back up quickly if need be. And if you build an outpost in the right place, you could end up being able to recruit really elite units out of allies as well. Do like steam tanks would be super cool. Gyrocopters, stuff like that would be absolutely awesome. All right, a trade agreement sounds good. Sounds good, Dawi Ken. I don't know how it is that Kiang is going to survive this. <laughs> this does not make any sense to me whatsoever. But I will take it all day long. The auto resolve tooketh away a couple episodes ago, and and now it giveth. I don't understand it. I don't understand. But whatever. <laughs> That's why I tried. Like I was frustrated at myself for making the wrong move and trusting the auto resolve. And I should be frustrated, because that was just an impatient move by myself, not wanting to have to fight. Oh, we had two buildings come into play there, so that's annoying and unfortunate. Um, well, we're at now plus two. Did someone... Attrition, war declared, buildings constructed. Yeah, we, we must have accidentally brought on two. Um... We can offset one of them by putting this here. Because I'm not really super worried, so that'll give me one bit of offset. And it'll be finished in one turn. I do want to fix that. Alright, this not army... So cool. I'm gonna take Miao Ying, step out of this. Get ready to march forward. We don't want to go... We don't want to go crazy. We need to get these two armies together. We need to move together. Move safely. Move in pairs. Uh, we don't want to underestimate our enemies here. 
There is merit in this. We want to go take the Maw Gate next. An appealing experiment. We got very low movement up here in the mountains for some reason, so we'll go take the Maw Gate, hand that back over to the ogres. This is something that I expected could happen here. The vampires saw me coming, were concerned about facing that type of strength, and they pulled back from Nobly Gorge, which, again, I'd kind of hoped this would be the case. Um, we're going to encircle to get the best favorability off of the auto resolve i'm going to keep these armies always within reinforcement range of each other okay plus it gives skill points to more of our characters as well let's occupy we picked up a sword of striking there and a scroll of leeching let's take care of the skill points here i would focused on making my infantry and crossbows better here that should be good. Um, we should probably start working. Like, it's probably good to have even just the most basic dragon's breath there. A tool worthy of a dragon. Okay. Good. And then we've Shaver got skill points here. Twins. We've done the same thing here, roughly, except we need to finish unyielding. So we'll do that. A gift from my ancestors. And then we got Curse the Midnight Wind. We'll continue there. Let's take a look at the equipment on these characters. We do need a hand weapon here, and I thought we just picked up one, the Sword of Striking. We got a Relic Sword and Warrior Bane here. Let's go with Warrior Bane. And yeah, we'll do that one. Or the Relic Sword there. And let's do Warrior Bane. We need to keep equipping these units as best we can. We don't have tons of extra equipment. That lodestone is useless. The fire resistance might be okay in very certain conditions. Enchanted items. It's not bad if we don't have anything better, which I don't think we do. And then there's a scroll of leeching here. Not gonna do us a lot again. The earthing rod. Helps with the miscast chance, but you got to make sure and cast at the right time. A scroll of power decreases cooldown. That's not bad. Channeling staff is an augment cooldown to all spells. I mean, we'll just throw that on there. We probably don't have any scroll of shielding. Well, scroll of shielding's pretty good actually for a temporary hit. All right, so we've got some equipment there. What about this army? Let's take a look at the equipment. Yeah, still a lot of equipment needs on these. Characters, let's go ahead and throw either spell shield or dragon up. Spell shield is fine. And then. Ruin, iron curse icon is probably better than nothing there. I don't know if we have a good talisman. Not really, but I'll throw something on there just because we can. Take a look at the ancillaries here as well. Campaign movement range is never a bad thing. Attrition drop is always good. Flaming banner. Jade sculptor. Sword master would be good. And we got a water snake breeder. Tea master. Let's go tea master. Alright, there we go. And then let's take a look at the other character here. Again, we're going to be running low on what equipment we do have to hand out. Dragon Helm it is. Probably just have to throw a lodestone there. Ruby Ring. can hex the enemy magic. I don't see that making a huge difference, to be honest. A little shielding is probably better than nothing. Let's take a look at ancillaries. I forgot to do this on the other character as well, but... Corruption minus two, that could be good. All right, that's about all we can do for now. Okay, so we've got our character set up. Nobly Gorge is going to be... Opportunities. See, that puts me at plus three. I tear that down and then build a 
Yang building there. We should be good in terms of balance. I wish I could do it all in this turn, but that's okay. We don't want to whiplash too hard. So we've retaken Nobly Gorge. We'll want to take Mount Thug and give it back to the Ogres. Same with the Maw Gate. So we'll basically try and build the Ogres back up and bring them back to life, essentially. Um, let's see here. Gotta wait till the next turn to move those characters. We'll definitely want to build defenses up as quickly as we can because it takes forever to replenish them out here. We really need that balance back because, remember, a few turns ago we had almost everything headed towards the positive and some of that's going to turn around in the absence of that perfect harmony. So we definitely want the harmony uh, as quickly as we can get it. I'm going to start upgrading some of these minor settlements because we can get some extra defenses or money out of them as we go along. The yin and the yang. Let's see. We don't have... It's probably smart to have some recruiting infrastructure in some of these places. Again, I'm just going to be spending some money on buildings. I think we're good. I think we're good. Let's take a look. This garrison lord hasn't moved. We do have a skill point. It's not going to be a huge deal, but we'll take care of it. And we're not going to move that garrison lord. We can point the compass... We've done the Dragon Emperor's Wrath. I'm actually going to leave it there so that we can turn on that ability. Uh, building upgrades available. Compass selection. Outpost upgrade. I'm not worried about upgrading an outpost. I'm not really worried about building one at the moment with the Ogres either because it's still very likely that it gets torn down. So I'm going to exercise a little bit of patience there. And we'll just get through this turn in. See what's going on here. Okay. Caravan of Blue Roses made its move. We weren't attacked. Heralds of the Tempest are going to be one of our big focuses here. They have to be destroyed for us to attain campaign victory. Closer, where we are within one stroke of harmony here. It shall please the dragons. A single yang stroke of harmony. There we go. So that would put us back into balance. There could be a vampire army down here. Child of the Nine. For safety's sake, I'm still intending to move as groups. Here. Shifts as required. Wind shaper. A thoughtful maneuver. We could hit Mount Thug and take it down. I'm gonna move up there okay. and siege it. We'll catch an army there too, which is why I want to hit it. So let's move up and siege. Encircle. It's a rather large army too. Blood. At least we don't have the Natural vampire water. corruption up there, so as I move into reinforcing range. Cathay needs them dead. We can attack with two armies and we won't have to suffer Master any attrition due to vampiric corruption. So we've got two armies here. It's giving us a very solid chance to win. I understand why, but we're going to fight this because we've yet to get into a good battle on this episode. All right, the battle against the caravan is underway. I am in within rocket range of some of their troops, and I am going to begin bombarding them. They're going to want their reinforcements, and theirs are coming through quickly. Mine are about a minute away. And then I'll be given even more artillery, infantry, and range support. The AI is basically reforming, kind of doing its typical nonsense, waste of time type stuff. I'm going to bombard some of these skeleton Skeleton Spears, not particularly valuable targets. In fact, I'm going to call off the bombardment here for just a moment. We got some good kills. Like I said, the AI is going to want to reform. They are technically able to play the defensive role here. However, that said, um, I do have range, so even if they do decide to camp back there, I'll be able to go and convince them otherwise uh, quite easily. But yeah, I've got a very nice defensive position set up. All my units have yin-yang harmony. Um, so they'll be getting big buffs on the battlefield. I mean, just look at the melee attack and defense on these Celestial Dragon Guard. That is absolutely brutal. 
Um, so yeah, here comes my reinforcements, and my reinforcements are going to be a significant number more halberds. And I think what I'm going to do is start spreading these halberds, like I'm going to actually put one out in front of each sword unit. That way, if we get charged by horrors or cavalry, there's really no concern. I'm going to take one of these extra halberd units, put it right back here in the middle. I'm going to take this extra one, put it on the right-hand flank, this one over here. And then the additional crane guns, we're just going to really mass them here in the middle. So there we go, that'll be six crane guns right in the middle of the map. I've got more terracotta sentinels, so I'm going to have those stacked up across the front. We've got more leadership, and I'm going to put them kind of right here in the middle. We have additional artillery. I'm going to put the cannon right here in this position, and then I'm going to put the guys here. Okay. And then I've got some more cavalry. Let's throw them over here. And then we have more dragon crossbows. Let's stack them up like that. And then I'm going to take the other ones and stack them up over here. All right, we've got a cavalry detachment along with a terrorgeist moving around our flank. I'm going to actually tuck this in to prevent a charge there. And I'm going to go ahead and turn these dragon crossbows out to face the oncoming enemies. I've now got extra halberd support back here as well. All right, so we've got an extremely tight defensive position. Feeling very good. Better ability to defend. My dragon crossbows are now targeted over here. I'm actually going to target those blood knights. Our cannon is in firing position. I don't want it to just waste ammunition, though. However, that is an appropriate target. Black Knight, and let's get our cannon into defensive. I'm going to take all of the ranged troops into defensive for our reinforcements. Excellent. Looking quite good. We have a very tough defensive position now. Um, our other rocket is firing away as well. Let's turn off fire at will. Off fire at will. Okay. We wrecked that Black Knight, so we're going to wait for the next group of targets to come in. These, um, these Crypt Horrors are looking like excellent targets. Yes. Let's see what the other flank looks like. They have not run cavalry down my other flank. Second if they do, though, I will seal it off formation. like this. So I've got Halberds sealing the rear. Dragon, we have really shredded these Blood Knights. Armor-piercing crossbows. They're holding their attack because their other troops aren't here, ready to attack. That's fine with me. I'll cause them a great deal of damage in the meantime. Alright, let's get our rockets to work. Our cannon are firing at some cryptors, and our rockets. I'm going to start choosing different infantry positions to bombard. There we go. Let our rockets do a little bit of work. Our crane guns are in range of some enemy troops now as well. Boy, that terror guy is getting melted by my dragon crossbows. It is going to be basically impossible for the AI to break through our position here. Rocket battery is an easier position to control. Alright, there's your next target for the rockets. Here's a target for the rockets. There's a target for the rockets. Oh, yes! A brutal bombardment. Um, I've lost track of my cursor. It was pushing my screen around. <laughs> there we go. Got control of it again. This is probably the largest, most epic force of Cathayan troops that I have put together yet in this campaign, and I am loving it. We are just raining unholy death all over our enemies, and I am here for every last bit of it. Like the 
this right there. We'll block off that flank. Okay, so yeah, we are we are perfectly positioned. And I'm gonna take my six crane guns and blast Roderick Lichmore straight out of the sky. Alright, it's time for our Terracana Sentinels to intercept the front-running infantry units. We need to keep our rockets on target. I'm going to choose the targets farther away. And then for our cannons, again, I'm going to try and target stuff further afield. Alright, our dragon crossbows will start shredding anything that comes up. Our Terracana Sentinels have completely intercepted. Anything coming towards us in the front. Roderick was gunned out of the sky. I'm just going to uh, let my crane guns choose targets at will and fire. And my infantry is just going to hold the flanks. Nothing is getting around me effectively. Turn one of my crossbows this way and start mowing that stuff down. Yeah, we, we could totally control this battle right now. I mean, like, completely and entirely control this battle. I'm going to gun these Felbats before they get to my line, hopefully. There they go. That's going to be the end of that in a big hurry. They did land, but I certainly don't think they're going to last long. Um, I do have some magic. Let's throw some magic right across here. There's some hex wraiths there. So that was good timing, yet we wrecked the hex wraiths. And we'll just protect our units, and then do we have more magic still? Storm of Shadows. What else we got? Let's hex them out there in that fight. My mind is ready. And we've got a Thunderbolt we can drop right there. Wow, enemy is just getting absolutely shredded. I haven't even thrown in my Longma Riders, and at this point, let's have a little fun with them. I'm going to come get this leader of theirs with the Longma Riders. Alright, yeah, we are looking quite good here. Alright, let's get my group number one, and let's charge Dirk Gans here, I believe is his name. How did we get... Oh, we ran out of ammunition. <laughs> I was like, how did my rockets stop firing? They ran out of ammo. Okay, yeah, Dirk is getting the Longma beating of a lifetime. <laughs> Look, it's like a pile of Longma all over him. <laughs> Can't even see him underneath it. Oh, man, this was probably one of the biggest beatdowns I think I've ever handed an enemy here. And I, like I said, I'm here for it. I love it. We're going to be late on this lightning, but that would have been great. Just add some insult to injury there. Yeah, that was a savage beatdown. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, that, that was absolutely savage. <laughs> these guys didn't have a prayer. Look at these bannermen. 148 kills. And they only lost four men. Oh, that's hilarious. The rockets, though, I mean, were just absolutely brutal. Uh, we were shooting cheap units, and this rocket still picked up 2,933 value. That is hilarious. These crossbows here. This crossbow, yeah, 4,600 value. <laughs> oh, feel the wrath of Ran Cathay, you vampiric thugs. <laughs> Oh, that was so epic.
dragon blooded sugar. That actually balances us because I'm still building the building here, but I'm gonna hand Descended this one over to the ogres. Glory. I guess I could wait till the next turn and hand it over to the ogres. Yeah, I'll just do that. I'll wait till the next turn and hand it over. That way I end the turn and balance and we get to capture that extra treasury and um, the plus eight control that comes from it. Sugar yeah, that was a beautiful, rebooting. savage beatdown of the vampires. That was absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. All right, let's do some crane guns. I like crane guns for picking at the large targets. The crossbows are good for that too because of their armor piercing. Um, so I'm really going to focus on fire rain rockets at range. And then we've got our large units for blocking and then probably want a couple of long riders in this army as well. We could probably just train those globally. It takes four turns to get them. It's going to end up being... Let's do this. I can't get the long... Yeah, we can't get them locally. So two turns there, and then that I should be able to trade and do the crane gunners globally, and then we'll finish everything in two turns. So there we go. That army will be ready to go in two turns. These armies are looking for their next target, and the Maw Gate is here. So let's move on in. I am going to have to use a forced march stance here to get close enough to reinforce that fight. And then it looks like Xiao Ming will lead the assault on the Ma Gate, and that will take away some territory from Grimgor. Nothing worth seeing here in terms of controlling the combat. Occupy. That's going to knock us out of balance. Ooh, that's Sentinel Technician, that's kind of cool. Um, let's go ahead and go into the Maw Gate and hand this off to the Ogres. So, Diplomacy with Ogres, Gold Tooth, Trade Settlement, um, the Maw Gate. And again, I can extract money out of them for this. I don't need to at the moment, so I'm just gonna um, just hand it to them because I, I want them to actually build up and be stronger. On the next turn, I'm gonna hand them the Thug Mount or whatever that one was, but we'll give them the Maw Gate immediately. And the Maw Gate is going to be a like one of their larger settlements, I think. Karakazorn is way over there, so yeah, we gotta we've got some more help to give the ogres. We need to help them get Amble Peak. And this, and so we're, we're kind of building up a bit of a safe passage here. Again, these armies have to stay together. The dragon blooded. That's going to be an absolute must here. The armies stick together, use each other Celestia for safety. Ancestors. Honestly, think I may just give this to them now because I think I'm going to replenish quicker if I give it to the ogres. Child of the Nine. I won't get the balance on the end of this turn, but I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. Um, let's just go ahead and give it to the ogres. Uh, where'd they go? Gold tooth, gold tooth, right there. You've proven yourself useful to um, the tyrant. Yeah, I am proven pretty useful, aren't I? Handing you all kinds of free stuff. You're welcome. So there's Mount Thug. And we do not need to balance it. Just take it. You You're welcome, big gut. I'll remember this when I'm sending my caravans through. I expect some nice trade and payment, okay? Yeah, it did speed up my replenishment a little. <laughs> I figured it would. Okay. Well, we've got some skill points here. Let's take care of those. Um, we're going to... How close are we to gold chevron units? Pretty close, but we still got a little ways. So let's focus first on... Let's maybe throw... We've got Dragon's Breath. Probably be good to overcast Dragon's Breath. I'm going to do that. We'll do Route Marcher. A gift from my so basically that gives me a little bit of infantry busting power. We've also done some focus on our infantry so that it, you know, will be stronger against like a prolonged vampire assault. And vampires really can wear you out with a lot of units. And having like a really high increase of melee defense and attack goes a long ways in a grind against a faction like the vampires who are just going to throw bodies at you, literally. They're going to raise them from the dead and then they're going to throw them at you. So I, I feel like that these are good upgrades against them because the stats on their units are typically pretty low. 
and the more you kind of put some distance between your units and theirs, it just makes it that much harder for them to really gain ground against your infantry. And I think you all saw that what few troops they did get through Power to my infantry in last time, just, you know, of course, were absolutely savaged um, in the process. I don't know how far we can move and then still keep up with this army, because again, these armies need to move in unison. Alright, so we're going to move as one here. Fortress of Eyes is going to start a little bit of negative. Red Fortress is still in the negative a little bit. That should be mostly fixed as we get to next tier here. I'm going to spend a little bit of money. It takes a long time to improve these settlements out here, but the more we do and we can stabilize them, this just becomes territory that the AI can't use against us. The downside to it is when those Kurgan warbands spawn, we have to defend that stuff, which is frustrating. But that's kind of what this army is going to be for, in my opinion. So I do want to raise that army when the time comes. Right now I'm trying to just Caravan, dispatch, outpost, construction. Where can we construct the outpost? The Maw Gate could be a good place. The Great Hall of Greasis is the best one so far. Let's go ahead and put it here with the Great Hall of Greasis. Construct the outpost. Okay. All right. I think that's going to be their largest settlement. That's where I'd prefer to put these things at. So, yeah. Great Hall of Greases. Alright. We can use this Dragon Emperor's Wrath. I don't think we have any armies in our territory, but should they show up? Should be alright. I started that over, so I'm actually going to leave that pointed there, and then hopefully that'll start building the control again. Alright, um... We gave them Mount Thug. We have that other building that's going to come through. That should put us in balance. Let's end this turn and see if we end in balance. You have the Celestial Emperor's favor. All right. Let's see. Greasus wants us to join their war against Kalidor. I do not wish to join that war. I'm hoping that those two will just make peace and quit that nonsense. That was a stupid war initiated by Kalidor. There are far better targets for Kalidor to be after rather than the ogres. Like Grimgor, like Kolek, <laughs> like the Skaven. I mean, I can think of lots of different targets <laughs> before going after the ogres. All right. So that is going to be a successful turn end. Get a lord ready for duty. We're in perfect harmony. So we're going to get some extra cash. We're going to get extra... Okay, this army looks like needs to be dealt with. They're going to run away, of course. What are these units? Okay. Never. These guys are weak. There's no sense in chasing them. I'm going to go ahead and just move back down here, and we're going to continue our push against the vampires on the next turn. Um, but we're going to do it together. Like like I said, I got hasty last time and made moves before I was ready. I'm not making that same mistake twice. We will, we will proceed when it is time to proceed. It will be slow, but it will be methodical and effective. That is my main concern here. Get out of my mind. Oh, there's Grimgore. Oh, sweet. Maybe we'll get a shot at Grimgore in the next turn. I hope he sticks around. Um, I'd love to give him a double army beat down here. I don't know if he would be interested in such a thing. Wish I would have known he was there. Let's get the comet actually first. Okay. There we go. Defender. These lords can continue their push towards the Valery, and then that will get me up towards Colex territory. 
We'll be pushing further into the waste of chaos. At some point, I want to just start raising these settlements. I don't want to try and control a ton of them because it doesn't really benefit me at all. Um, other than, you know, just trying to keep it out of the hands of the enemy. But where the enemy can start getting in behind me and stuff, I don't think we're going to have an interest in trying to protect all that type of stuff. Said we were going to look at upgrades there. Okay. Defense is here. Go ahead and run an upgrade there. Run an upgrade there. Okay, so that's a good spend of money. We'll hang on to the rest for a turn in, because like I said, I'm trying to stay well ahead on money. We're going to skip that. We're not going to move the compass. And Lord not moved. Yep, that was intentional that this Lord wasn't moved. Um, I might... Nah, that's too risky. Um, well, I could move here. I'll speed this army up into Force March, pull them up closer, and then I'll put this one into an ambush. And we'll see if we can you know, lay a potential trap there. I, I doubt it will work out to our favor, but we'll just see. Don't need to upgrade the outcoes. I'm not gonna worry about the caravan. But soon, I think we probably can dispatch the caravan. We're starting to cut a route through the caravan of blue roses here, though it's not entirely safe yet. All right. To lend you its... A non-aggression pack. That sounds good. We are now strength rank number one. We've probably been there before, but we are back at it. And not surprising. I mean, you all saw what our armies can do. Ooh, ambush failed. It says, your army was spotted by the enemy before it could spring its ambush. You have an opportunity to intercept them and engage them in battle. You know what? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Um, we're actually going to fight this one, and it seems stupid for me to fight this because it's an easy win, but I'm worried that auto resolve will give them more than they deserve when I think we can just absolutely crap on these guys, so let's go ahead and do so. All right, we are ready to kick some vampire booty here. I'm going to let my Rockets open fire across that formation, and then there's some knights out here that I'm going to target with the cannon. That's going to be blood knights. Oof, our cannon got a good chunk of those skeletons there. Yeah. Start targeting these Graveguard great weapons. Then the blood knights are going to get the wrath of my cannon. We are just on the edge of our artillery range, but that's fine. The AI thinks it doesn't have to attack because... Um, I initiated the battle, but they're soon going to realize that they very much do have to attack as they start to take a pretty uh, severe chunk of damage, no doubt. I can't move the camera up any further to let you all see this because it is limited by the difficulty. Ooh, yeah, that's some nice shots on the Blood Knights. Rockets getting some good hits. Nice square hits. Uh, I do believe there's just a little bit of forest. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, was that my... Oh, nope, never mind. Wrong target. You keep working the Blood Knights. Um, and then... Where'd my other artillery piece go? You go ahead and start working those Grave Guards. Okay, I've got reinforcements coming. I can also summon an Ancestral Warrior. Start bringing my reinforcements this way don't really expect to need them, but I do want all of them moving in the right direction. Alright, those knights getting absolutely lit up. Bring those extra crossbows over here. here Block off the rear. Extra rocket batteries right there. Ooh, yeah, these guys. Woo! And now they're inside of the range of my crane guns as well. My cannons have already completely destroyed the Blood Knight. I'm gonna move these artillery pieces down here. It'll be easier for me to pick them up. Alright, I'm gonna start targeting the Black Knights. And then the crane guns can pick up the Terrorgeist. 
There we go. Rockets. Keep after the graveguard. Is that a black knight and a blood knight? Okay. A standard ground. Do I have the righteous lances? I do. Let's bring them up. And then I'm gonna summon an ancestral warrior right here to pin all that in as well. Terror Geist is gonna go down. Alright, there's our ancestral warrior, so the blood knights are gonna get oof. A little bit of friendly fire there. Alright, those those blood knights are absolutely trapped. They've got an ancestral warrior ripping magic anti air armor. Yeah, damage through them, the terracotta sentinel. I got the Righteous Lances crushing that Black Knight, and here comes the Mortis Engine, so let's give him the requisite attention it deserves. Let's see if I can debuff the speed on that. I'm gonna actually go out here and block a little with the... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got hit by the spell too. Absolutely murdered. Yeah, this army is just getting dissected. <laughs> just getting utterly dissected. I think all we need to do at this point is kill off the enemy leader, and we take home a pretty quick victory here. I've got my crane guns working. I'm going to put my um, lancers right behind him, the longma. Start winding up different units here. Yep, he's on a corpse card, so he's a horribly vulnerable target. Wow, these guys are getting absolutely shredded. Alright, their leader is down. Let's bring our long riders to bear here. Look at this, we've got the Terracotta Sentinel. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Rocket hit. Just gruesome. Bring the righteous lances down. Just finish off all this vampire infantry. Terracotta Sentinel out here. Oh, like a boss. I mean, that was... That was, like, borderline war crimes there, folks. <laughs> we only took two losses. It's 1,472 on their end. Um, I could run the replenishment. It would help me get my Terracotta Sentinels healed a little bit. I'm just going to take the money. Um, we'll be replenishing in a decent clip. So the Caravan of Blue Roses got tricked by the ambush. I'm glad I ended up doing that. I hadn't originally thought about it, and it ended up working out good. So we have now massacred two armies from the Caravan of Blue Roses. And I mean massacred. Um, so it wasn't even close. Now... That's good for us. There's no question about that, that it's good for us. How much good it does us is, you know, remains questionable because it really depends on a few factors. Who is this? Korok Man Ripper. He's raiding. He hasn't done anything to the Valerie, so they're. Oh, it's Big Daddy, folks. This is where we're going to start the next episode. We're going to get to fight against Big Daddy. He's got the Marquis of Masochism, oof. The Uncle Furuncle, Bilious Thundergruff. He's got the Summoners of Rage, the Severed Claw, the Mirror Guard. Well, he's bringing, he's bringing the house, um, but I feel like his house is going to be completely disheveled and picked apart by our army. So stick around, folks. Next episode, we get to take on the Dragon Ogre himself and get to start our fight against him. Hope you all enjoyed it. Air of Carthage, signing out.